listeners and subscribers. Hope all is well. So I didn't say anything about the Notre Dame Cathedral catching fire. And I wasn't going to. But now that the incident in Sri Lanka has happened, and you couple that with what happened in New Zealand, it's starting to paint a picture. Now, I know these are just recent high-profile incidents, but if you don't look at them as isolated incidents, I think we start to see a trajectory that the powers that be are trying to put us on. Now, when it comes to the Notre Dame Cathedral, okay, I know there's a couple of different schools of thought on that. Um, you got people who think that the French government was behind it because of all the donations they knew they were going to receive, supposedly, right? They got a billion dollars in just a couple of days for the repair of this. And, you know, that had sparked the Yellow Vest movement uh, even further. Okay, it sparked it even further because they're thinking if we can get all this money to rebuild, you know, a cathedral, why can't we get the appropriate funds for the homeless and the struggling and the starving here. And that's the same that goes in America. You know, they have all this money to give to other countries, but, you know, just look at San Francisco alone, right? Just look at California alone. And then the rest of the homelessness around the nation. So you know that there, there's a lot of shams going on. So it's not outside the realm of possibility for somebody to, to come to the conclusion that, hey, their government, this is just a, gra a gravy train, right? Then you have the people who think this was done by simply religious extremists, right? Pick, pick your poison, uh, pick your faction, but by religious extremists, right? Muslims and uh, Islamist extremists and, you know, whichever. And, you know, that's always going to be one of the, one of the initial go-tos, right? Then there are people who think this has something to do with the deep state outside of the French government. Like I said, there's a couple of different schools of thought here, but no matter what you think happened here, what is happening is that we are being put on a trajectory that isn't going to be good for us, okay? Because just like what we saw with Christ Church in New Zealand, like a day after some guy was uh, poised to do similar stuff at another mosque, right? He was harassing folks and, and got arrested. Uh, copycats was what we're talking about. Um, synagogues were also peppered with swastikas after the, the uh, New Zealand shooting there, okay? And after the Notre Dame, okay, a cathedral fire, there was a gentleman who was apprehended, I believe it was here in the United States, that was acting suspiciously around places of worship and was, was caught inside of a church with a couple of, um, two gallons of gas, okay, and he said his car was out of gas and it turned out authorities found out that it wasn't. So that was an, a, another su suspected potential um, arson or, or burning right there, okay, following the cathedral. And with the with the, the, the Sri Lanka attack, authority, Sri Lankan authorities had notice of the attack 10 days before it happened. They said that um, radical groups uh, could potentially be targeting certain, the, the areas that were actually bombed uh, 10 days before this happened. Uh, 10 days ago, I mean, the Notre Dame Cathedral wasn't even um, set ablaze, you know, 10 days ago. So you, you got to wonder if the French authorities had got some, uh, some kind of warning as well. But whether they got a warning or not, this stuff still happened. I, I just want to put that out there that, yes, the authorities were warned that this could be a, a potentiality uh, before it happened. Okay, And looking at the, the Christchurch shooting, the Notre Dame right, Cathedral, and the, the bombings here, I don't see these as isolated incidents. Okay, you can you can blame, you know, pick your poison faction, pick your poison group. You can say it's the deep state. You can say it's the government for gravy train. No matter what you think. Ultimately, what we're going to see is the sparking of the race wars, uh, the holy wars, the religious wars, okay? Because synagogues, mosques, churches, uh, other places uh, of, of worship, of gathering for different religions, they have all been targeted, okay? They've all been vandalized. They've all been burned. They've all been attacked, okay? So this isn't just a Christianity thing. This isn't just a Muslim thing. This isn't just a Hindu thing, okay? This isn't just a Buddhist thing. Because you have to understand out there in Sri Lanka, um, you've got Hindu, you've got Buddhism, you've got Catholicism, Muslim, you got all that, okay? It's, it's a melting pot. But this isn't just about that. Yes, there are uh, faction, factions of religious extremists within these different types of religion that are perpetuating these type of violent acts, yes. But is it in every case? No, absolutely not. If you don't think that a intelligence agency is going to don certain garb to try and spin a narrative, 
then you're more short-sighted than you realize. Okay, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying I don't rule those instances out because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. If you know the spiritual implications here, you know we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against uh, you know powers, um, the rules of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, so it's not the Russians, it's not the Chinese, it's not the North Koreans, it's not the Muslims, it's not the Hindus, it's not the Christians, the Catholics. Okay, it's not them. This stuff that's happening here, right? The, these violent instances. This is a physical manifestation of spiritual warfare. That's what's happening. Okay, because. If we're going to ultimately be on the trajectory of the one world government, the one world religion, and the one world currency, all right, this is the genesis of that. We, I mean, the momentum behind this has started long ago, but now in this modern age, we start to see the agenda ramp up a hundred times fold, okay? Each instance becomes more high profile and ties into the agenda more and more. Or we're, you already have people who are blaming Muslims. You already have people who are blaming Christians, people who are blaming Hindus, right, B blaming Buddhas. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, principalities and powers, the rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's not these different factions that are solely, you know, it's not just some guy who decides to wake up, hey, I'm going to bomb this church. Hey, I'm going to set ablaze this synagogue. Hey, I'm going to shoot up this mosque. No, it's not that simple. I don't see it as that black and white. Okay, I see this as manifestations of a spiritual war and that there are people out there, the enemy, okay, with their hands in this, okay? The powers that shouldn't be have their hands in this. They always do, all right? Because it's the narratives ultimately that they're allowed to spin that ultimately we see the legislation, the laws, the regulations that are oppressive towards us. Okay, what happened after uh, the, the shooting in Christchurch, right, in New Zealand? They were banning and purging social media. You couldn't even see what happened. You couldn't even see what happened. You couldn't even look at the footage. You couldn't even look at the very evidence that they were taking people's guns away, limiting rights and freedoms for. You couldn't even see what happened. And in the incidents here in Sri Lanka, guess what? Sure enough, they locked down social media because they're saying, oh, they're spreading hate speech, right? Which is, which is pretty arbitrary, okay? They're spreading hate speech, they're spreading racism, they're spreading disinformation. So anytime a high-profile incident happens, and alternative media or um, am amateur journalists or anybody who's not a mainstream news media outlet and they've used a pick your platform to try and ferry that information to their audiences, it's been shut down. Because the only information they want you to see is mainstream information because it's never wrong, it's never biased, it's never filled with you know, false information and it has no agenda. Okay, it's it's a godsend. All right, the the mainstream media from you know pick your nation, especially here in the United States, is a godsend. There's no intelligence agencies behind it. They've never been proven wrong before. All right, but when incidents like these happen, it's becoming more common. Well, they'll say, well, we'll just shut down social media so none of the alternative information gets out, and the only narrative that you'll hear, at least for you know the first couple hours, is ours. And then we'll give you back your access to your social media so you guys can go back to spreading racism and false information, <laughs> right? That's what, that's what they say. It. And the thing is, is these, these categories are so arbitrary, right? They're, they're so arbitrary. This is hate speech. We're going to deem this hate speech. Uh, we're going to deem this racism. Okay, yeah, we have free speech, but hey, you're crossing the line. No, man. It, it, this, this, is, this goes deeper than, the, than just isolated incidents. I mean, just look at the last three high-profile ones. I, like I said, the Christchurch, um, the Notre Dame Cathedral, and this, this thing here in Sri Lanka. This is all going to tie in to the one world religion where we're going to spark the holy wars. We're going to break down the traditional values of all the churches and all the religions that are already there. We're going to get people to say that, you know, all these religions are just different pathways to the same God, all right? And then there's going to be momentum behind a type of change that's going to fundamentally resurface what we know as religious worship, or at, at least the, the world in general as we know it. I mean, there's a financial overhaul coming. We already see the slowdown here in the United States. We already see the telltale signs of economic collapse. All the indicators that were there in 08 are pretty much there now. And, you know, the Fed's talking about we need to begin quantitative easing, all this stuff, okay, in, in, in here, in, in a, here in America. And we already know there's a global slowdown, okay? Even China's slowing down. So you've got America, you've got China, you've got um, economies around the world slowing down, America specifically as well, okay? 
on the brink of this potential um, financial crisis. It, it could be a financial crisis because the, the thing is, even, even if the, some of the money is there, if investors and businesses, corporations, they start to see things as too risky, okay, they'll pull out and that will that'll affect us. Okay, the Fed, they do what they do, <laughs> that'll affect us. All right, and that's the money, that's the monetary system right there. The religious system, just look at what's happening. Just, just look what's happening all across the world when it comes to religion. Okay, with, with, with the Pope, um, with Muslims, with, with, with ISIS, okay, with these incidents that are happening here um, on the rise where they're trying to spark a, a sense of hatred towards another group, another person, another religion inside these countries. So we're all blaming each other and we're all going after each other, okay? Breaking that down, ultimately, we're, that, that's, we're already worshiping the beast, right? I mean, look at the, just look at the internet alone. How, how much time do we spend on that, okay, with the celebrities? And th that's, those are forms of worship. Those are forms of idolatry. So it's not a stretch to think that if properly implemented, and I know maybe the word religion has certain kind of connotations, um, you know, associated with it that people sort of, yeah, I'm, I'd never be a religious type person. We're already in the hands of the religion we're going to accept, okay? Think about that one. But like I said, it's, it's, it's dangerous when they shut down free speech, when you can't even talk about some of this stuff after it's happened. You know, they say, oh, well, that's, that's disinformation. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm questioning some of the narratives. You guys don't even know what's going on. You guys go on the mainstream media and say, we don't know. Okay, well, we're looking at, we're assessing the evidence just like you guys, and we're coming to, to certain conclusions. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? But they'll find a way to make it dangerous. They'll find a way to to try and shut you up so no alternative information gets out there. We see that we're on this trajectory of the new world order, which, in, which includes the one world government, the one world um, currency, okay, and the one world religion. And we are on that trajectory right now, and it's instances like these and the ultimate scenarios and kind of stories they're able to spin from them that, that keep us on that path. Anyway, I'm done rambling, at least for now. California Carter, signing off.